Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us tonight, uh, Michigan Depression Glass Society meeting for the month of December. I'm Jan Holdinsky, and I will be presenting today Red Glass, uh, also known as Royal Ruby. And you will find that most of my pieces of glass are made by Anchor Hocking. That being said, I am going to give you a little bit of background information about Anchor Hocking. Um, but first, let me just say it's, it's my honor and privilege to have this opportunity to share with you my table collection. Um, I actually love red. Uh, red, I find, is a color that I can use quite a bit. Um, I use it during the holidays. I use it in February for Valentine's Day. And then I also use it um, July 4th and bring my pieces out as well. So Anchor Hocking um, has originated the name Royal Ruby. And Royal Ruby in the Warman's book is appears to be a pattern glass, but it's also a color of, of glass. So um, everything that I'm talking about is, is primarily Royal Ruby, primarily red glass, but I have other pieces that I wanna share with you as well. So there are a few manufacturers that I have several pieces from, and that's going to be my focus as well tonight. Um, I have found that New Martinsville, Viking, Fenton, Payton City, and of course, Anchor Hocking. Those are some of the manufacturing companies um, that make quite a bit of red glass. So Anchor Hocking has a goal, and that goal is to make glass in homes that are really needed. Their focus is on the consumer. And so they have taken their line of production and divided it into four categories. Tableware, serverware, drinkware, and uh, bakeware. Uh, so that has been primarily their focus. What I found interesting in the Warman's book, and this book is from 2003, um, when I went through and looked up Royal Ruby, um, there are no candlesticks in this book referenced. There are no candy jars, no candle, um, candy dishes of any sort. And, and I'm sure today, um, because they, they do have a focus on the consumer, that um, some of the newer books are, are probably make reference to those pieces. Um, but um, I also found it interesting that the book has popcorn bowls, um, never knew those existed. And they have um, another piece called Puff Boxes, which I'm assuming is the Kleenex box. Um, I would love to see one of those pieces. Um, but there's a lot of interesting pieces. It's all about the home. Anchor Hocking um, has labeled themselves as being the genius of utility. And what does that mean? It means that they are an American-made glass company and everything that they make is focused on the home. Um, every piece of glass that they make has their DNA of American made in it. So all of that being said, Anchor Hocking was actually opened up their doors in 1905. They are 115 years old and they are still manufacturing glassware today. They're one of the oldest companies around that are still producing glass. They were um, opened up their doors in Lancaster, Ohio. Um, and so that just kind of gives you a little bit of background. Now let me talk a little bit about um, some of the pieces on my table. Actually, when I started pulling this out, I didn't realize I had as much as I did. Um, so um, this piece is a sherbet. And this sherbet is actually the, the pattern is Baltic. Very simple. And most of Anchor Hocking glass is simple and plain and yet stunning. Um, I have the cereal bowl, uh, the uh, soup bowl, um, probably could be used as a cereal bowl. One of the things about Royal Ruby is that it is a deep red shade of glass. Not all of it, but most of the pieces that I have are in the darker red. And then we have the bread plate or the sandwich plate, just a seven inch plate. 
you could probably use it with the soup bowl. Uh, so the two part pieces. I have two different sizes of dinner plates. I have the nine inch and I have the 10 and a half inch. And you can see perhaps the, the larger plate is much more clear, not as deep red as the nine inch plate. Would I ever use all of these pieces together? Probably not. Would focus more on what I'm serving. Um, but, but that's just some of the pieces. Then I have the cup and saucer. What's interesting in my research with the cup and the saucer, the saucer is just, again, plain and simple. This is a three and a half cup, inch cup, and I actually use these as coffee cups. And then when I was reading the books, I realized, hey, why are these bigger? Four inch, three and a half inch. Well, I learned that this is, the three and a half inch is actually the punch bowl cup. Um, but I do use it for coffee. Um, and the coffee cup made in this particular pattern is actually much bigger. And I only have two of those. And then I have the creamer and the sugar, the deep red, very deep red, very, very royal ruby. And then on this end of the table, uh, I have complemented my table with a few of the crystal pieces, Orchid by Heise, um, very elegant, very dainty, and I don't know if you can see, but it's got some of the gold accents on it. And then the salt and pepper shakers, they are not anchor hocking, at least I don't believe they are. And if I had to guess, they're newer, but they're red and they go with the table setting. Um, so I did end up picking those up as well. My candlesticks are simple but elegant Fenton candlesticks. And then I've accented my table with a American vase, just crystal American by Fostoria. Um, my beverage wear, um, I have a crystal stemware, but it has the red base. And so it really does accent the table very well. Then I have Popeye and Olive. This is made by um, New Martinsville. And um, the uh, pattern for this one is like these protruded little bubbles um, that's on the inside of the glass. So on this side of the table, um, my serving ware um, is Radiance by New Martinsville. Um, if I said this was New Martinsville, I meant Payton City, Popeye and, and all of them. Um, so um, the Radiance is a, a very elegant, stunning pattern. Um, I have two relish dishes and a bowl. And the pattern in this is like these teardrops, these, these lines that just go all around the markings of the glass. And then the bowl, same thing, but then you have like these, these teardrops that go up. So that is the trademark of this particular glass, Radiance. Very pretty, and Radiance also comes in a, in a, a beautiful blue. And then on this side of the table, my serving pieces, this is Janice. For me, no table setting is complete in my house unless I have a piece of glass that I got from my mom. And this is a piece of glass that I got from my mom. Most of you may know her, Betty Nuffle. Um, and Janice has like these, also like teardrops, makes like a V shape. Um, so Janice comes in a lot of red primarily, but it also comes in crystal. And I also have, and those are mayo dishes, and I also have it in the crystal. Same thing, different color. And then I have the larger bowl in Janus, which is um, salad or a fruit bowl, something cold. Um, every glass collector, I think, knows that um, most of the bowls in the Depression era, um, you probably should only put cold items in there um, unless you know that it's made for hot items made the mistake of doing that once, put a hot vegetable in one of my bowls, and it cracked. Um, didn't shatter, it just cracked. Um, and so then, let me take you over here. I have a, a few other pieces of red. Um, this is a swan, 
uh, made by Viking Glass. And I have always used this for candy, ornaments, or something of that nature. And in my research, I found out this is actually a pickle for pickles. It's a pickle bowl. Um, and I think that's the beauty of being a glass collector. You can do whatever you want with it. Be creative. Use it however you want. Um, so you always learn something new. And then I have a serving um, platter, Crow's Foot by Payton City. And with the Crow's Foot, again, it's like a teardrop. And then it's got like a fan um, marking on it. Um, so a lot of these pieces, there's like teardrops and you just got to know the specifics of each one to know, but they all match in my opinion and go together. And then I have a platter and I cannot, for the life of me, identify it. I, once upon a time, I did. And I, this is probably one of my most used pieces. Um, I use it for the, the Christmas, the Valentine's Day, the July 4th, cookies, ham roll-ups, whatever. Um, but this comes out during all those holidays and I absolutely love it. It's the perfect size. And then we have pieces that are called Ruby Classic, also by Anchor Hawking. And these are, it's a very heavy bowl. Um, just, it has ridges all around it. Um, dark, dark red. And I was lucky enough to find this bowl um, at one of the antique stores, actually in Millington, Michigan. And very cheap. I think I paid $8 for it. And I know it's, it's worth quite a bit in the book. And then I got the matching platter as well. Um, can use them separate. You can use it together. Um, but uh, both pieces are, are well used in, in my house. And then um, another piece that I have, it's Moon Drops by New, New Martinsville. And it just has like these, again, pr protruding bubbles on it. Um, and this is a three foot bowl, um, again, for cold items. And then Coronation, again, by Hawking Glass. And Coronation is just a very easy pattern to identify. It's got very, very small um, ridges all the way around it with um, bigger ridges underneath it, handles. And then it comes with like the fruit bowl or the berry bowl, or however you want to use it. Um, I have put pudding in there. I have put candy in there. Um, done, I have done all kinds, of, all kinds of things. I have my seasonal cabinet, what I call my seasonal cabinet. And um, I use to every month. Now it's generally every couple months. I just put whatever the season is, the color of glass. So obviously December is here. And I put my red glass there. Sometimes I put all green in there as well. Um, but, you know, that's just another sh sharing of some other pieces that I have. And then finally, I just want to show you one final piece. It's coin. It is um, made by Fostoria. This is heavy, heavy glass. And this piece has like little coins all around the urn all around the um, um, lid and they're like patriotic. These pieces have been reproduced and my understanding is one way you can tell is the coins on the original is more like a satin finish whereas the reproductions it's just clear. It, it's not satin at all. And I do have a few pieces of those, and it does match, and they do look alike, but they're reproduced. Um, so all of that being said, um, it is my pleasure to have this opportunity um, to share with you again my collection. I hope there's opportunity where we can actually get together um, and, you know, do this um, where we can be in a room together. Um, and I, I wish er, each and every one of you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. Thank you so very much.